Dear friends, thank you very much for joining us today. We have a packed agenda, so uh, I will not say much except thank you very much. Thank you to our partners at City for co-hosting this event. Um, we have an amazing agenda. We have lots of people coming, so it will soon be very packed. And I would kindly ask uh, Krista Volpicelli to uh, kick off the conference. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for showing up early right at the start. I would like to open with the first sentence of a public company's annual report. We seek to be Earth's most customer-centric company. This company goes on to say we are guided by four principles. Customer obsession rather than competitor focus. Passion for invention commitment to operational excellence, and long-term thinking. These principles could apply to many companies, perhaps many even shipping companies. One could argue long-term thinking is difficult to think about with the cycles that we endure, but I would argue that most management teams are trying to take quite a long-term view. Customer obsession, invention, operational excellence, and long-term thinking. It probably won't come too much of a surprise that this is coming from Amazon's annual report. When you read further down as to how Amazon delivers its strategy, it's notable once you get to the risk factors, pages and pages, which we're all familiar with with public companies. But one of the top risk factors listed in Amazon's report talks about the need to optimize how Amazon matches the delivery of its goods to be able to deliver them to its customers. It states, we rely on a limited number of shipping companies to deliver inventory to us and complete our orders to our customers. One of the top risk factors for Amazon to be the Earth's most customer-centric company. Yes, Amazon owns its own airplanes and takes its prime delivery in two days around the United States. But the primary movement of consumer goods is on ships around the globe. So as you think through the steps of the value chain from ship owner to liner to freight forwarder, the core service of being able to secure shipping in a reliable manner, in a safe manner, in a cost-effective manner, and in an environmentally friendly manner is key to most consumer-facing companies today. Without it, they can't deliver their promise to their investors. Let's shift from the consumer world into the energy world. The big energy companies know well how critical it is to have reliable shipping services. In the 2018 annual report for Shell, the letter from the chairman is focused entirely on the theme of trust of investors in Shell's value proposition. As all the tanker and gas companies who will be speaking here today know, they are dedicated to ensuring that their organizations can meet the stringent standards for the vetting requirements of their charters. So we have a consumer-facing company, a big energy company, and when you look at what they're saying to their investors, underpinning all of their messages are themes that underscore the importance of the shipping industry. That said, for those of us who live and breathe this industry, the general theme over the last several years has been one of very weak investor sentiment. Sentiment has been poor, stocks have underperformed, a lot of shareholder value has been lost, and new public equity raised in the US has been dramatically reduced. So as we kick off today's conference and think about some of the themes, I would suggest that everyone think about three key areas as we assess if we are at a point where this, these trends may reverse. Number one is timing. As usual, Nicholas and his team at Capital Link have organized a fantastic day of panels. We'll cross every sector of shipping from dry to containers to every sector of tankers to gas. So everyone here has the opportunity to hear the latest views of where we are in the cycle within each of these areas. Number two, 
differentiation of strategies. How are companies embracing changes in technology, digital strategy, IMO 2020 and the great scrubber debate? And number three, capital structure and consolidation. How can a company generate differentiated value for its shareholders? I personally feel quite positive that we are poised for a better second half of 2019 and into 2020, and we'll see if others agree today. I would remind everyone as we kick off that it is April Fool's Day, so I will leave it to the moderators of all the panels to ensure that everyone's comments are in good faith. IPO momentum was reinvigorated in the last week following Lyft's successful $2.3 billion offering, a very positive benchmark that sets the stage for the IPO markets for the remainder of the year. Next up, you'll hear a bit about the broader backdrop in the equity markets from Tobias, a colleague at Citi. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Tobias to give us some of the macro backdrop before we get into the specifics of shipping today. Mm -hmm. 